So I got this mystery eBay turbo just based on look and uh, it went on sale for about 200 bucks American. Uh, it was like 260 Canadian, maybe a little bit less. And uh, I just wanted to see what it was. I was pretty sure it was going to be a decently usable unit just based on the minimal dimensions that were provided. I've already gone ahead and uh, pulled apart all the bolts on the housing so we can quickly take a look at this. We're going to open it up as well, see what type of bearing system, system is in it. Uh, just by feel, I can tell that this guy is going to be a journal bearing. There's just the tiniest amount of play. And also, it's very quiet. Um, ball bearing turbos will tend to sound like ball bearings when you spin them. So... Let's get into it, rip this thing apart real quick, take a look at all the pieces. And uh, I guess I should tell you what it is. So this was advertised um, as a 5560 T3, T4, but I could tell looking at the housings, it's got Gen 2 style housings. And uh, based on that one dimension, which was supposed to be the same on compressor and turbine, that it's a GT30 size turbo. So when we pull it apart, we may have an opportunity to use parts on hand to uh, replace the bearings with upgrade bearings through 360 thrust potentially, if I've got it on the shelf. Uh, but it's 11 blade billet front end and a 10 blade GT30, so 55 exducer 60 inducer turbine on a 0.64 t3 housing so let's take a close look first off checking out the housings uh, so some nice machine work on the outlet and the inlet and it's a little bit hard to see but this is the cast in as opposed to machined in style uh, t51r type uh, anti-surge so that whole groove down there has been cast and the only part that's machined is this one little cut in. And uh, why that's nice is it's gonna not have as many machine burrs uh, on the inside as a typical eBay cover. Uh, like we took a look at the GT3582 uh, eBay turbo, like Max Peating Rod. Uh, that one has a ton of burrs that could get sucked in. But this one looks real good. I've already kind of been through it. Um, the inside of the casting doesn't show a huge amount of casting flash like we've seen before on other eBay turbos. It's quite smooth. So honestly, for the power this is going to make, I don't think it's really worth it to uh, significantly get in there with, you know, porting tools. Though um, there is... And you can kind of see it way down there where the uh, bolt holes are threaded through on the two that go into the housing. There's a tiny bit of burring. So that's just going to be like a second with probably the flapper to knock those birds loose and just make sure nothing comes off inside the uh, compressor housing. But overall, quite happy with this. Uh, taking a look at the wheel. I was happy and surprised to see that it's got a significant extended tip. So it's almost 34 or sorry, 74 millimeters uh, at the extended tip and 71 mil at the wheelbase, 53 mil at the inducer. So this wheel is like a, about a millimeter shy of being a GT3071 uh, with 11 blade compressor wheel. Again, I'll look at the profile. Nice, tall wheel. And great machine work here. So, very pleased with uh, what I'm seeing so far. This wheel, I mean, this wheel alone, if you were to get aftermarket wheel for like a cheaper eBay Turbo, would be like a $120 wheel. So, the parts that were used in this so far have been high quality. And I'm super impressed with the price point. Um, the manufacturer of the listing claimed that it was VSR balanced. 
and I noticed that it's got this one little groove on the compressor nut. So it looks uh, like that would be typical of a VSR balancing process. Um, and the real evidence of that is going to be if we see the brass material transfer on the turbine shaft. So we'll pull it apart, take a look at that. But next, let's take a look at the rear housing. Our turbine wheel is definitely a classic uh, GT30. Uh, so it's been trimmed away at the base of the wheel for weight reduction. Um, it's a very low trim wheel. So it's going to be high throughput at the top end. A bit of an interesting pairing with uh, the 11 blade front end. Uh, which is going to be biased more for mid-range power but overall it's going to deliver you know some pretty good power i'm going to say like 400 wheel with pretty good spool and definitely no restriction or boost creep issues uh, looking in our oil drain you can see the turbine shaft so this is definitely a journal bearing turbo which means we can pop it apart take a look at the bearing system but real nice uh, chra so for parts alone, this thing has been great so far, um, but I'm going to probably preserve it as a singular unit with a couple more mod modifications. Rear housing, again, looks great. Cleanly cast, cleanly machined. Um, you can see little styrofoam bits everywhere. That's part of the reason I want to take uh, this thing apart and just make sure no styrofoam got into the bearing system. It bounced around in the box on the way. And then one minor modification needed, just uh, open that up to the true T3 flange size uh, so your exhaust isn't running into the wall there. But, you know, maybe an hour of porting total. And then we'll get ceramic coat on the turbine housing as well. So it's just our uh, classic M8 12-point nut on the compressor side, reverse thread. And then uh, M14 socket or wrench on the back. But this one, I noticed the uh, compressor wheel is not coming off. So we're going to need to use the heat gun. So bear with me. I'm going to heat this thing up and then we'll slip it off. So I've heated this thing now. For like 15 minutes it's hot to the touch and actually the center housing is getting hot too and this will not budge so um this wheel uh my god <laughs> i've never actually run into this issue before uh, but it's on there real real well like i'm willing to bet that this nut probably doesn't even have to be there uh, though we'll put it back to preserve balance so i think what we're going to do now is uh i mean let it cool but uh, we'll blow some oil into the oil feed and just test the spin i mean there's not much going on in terms of play it is like a brand new turbo uh, but we'll just give it a little test to make sure that the debris if any is blown through the bearing system so i'll probably start with a shot of uh brake clean to clean it out then throw some oil through Give it the old spin test a couple times and then I'll uh, port the housing and work on getting it back together. So got some oil forced down the oil feed and uh, it's spinning really, really nice. Like uh, arguably as nice as a ball bearing unit. So I'm quite pleased with this and uh, it would have been nice to inspect the seals and the bearings and everything, but I really don't have any concerns with it the way it's kind of performing on bench here. So let's focus our energy and time on uh, trimming up that rear housing. Went ahead and Cerakoted a number of pieces on the compressor side. So we got the cover itself. Uh, as far as porting, just gave it a swirl with that kind of flapper port tool, smoothed out the burrs, started coated the backing plate on both sides, and uh, a decent amount of port work 
on the turbine housing, just to open it up to that true T3 size. So it's going to spool up a little quicker, flow a little better. Getting some fittings for center housing, trying to figure out oil feed, water. And uh, I think we're ready to put this thing back together. Final look at our $200 eBay turbo. So this thing, though poorly advertised, is definitely a GTX 3071. And with just a little bit of port work, some ceramic coating, and some nice little fittings, things are looking great. And I'm excited to get this on to something at some point and uh, make some power with it. But if you see one of these available, I would definitely snap it up um, right out of the box. It would have run pretty good. And uh, obviously, if you're willing to put in a little bit of work, it can look and perform even better. So if you like the video, you got any questions, uh, comment below. And as always, like and subscribe.